On this episode of Gadget, we're taking the internet mobile with a D-Link 3G EVDO router. We'd like to extend our thanks to our production sponsors, the University Catholic Center, the California Province of the Jesuits, and Gateway, the beauty and power of one. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net. It's a place where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Balasser of the Society of Jesus. I'm a member of the California province of the Jesuits. We're the largest religious order in the Catholic Church, and we're here in the Center for Apostolic Technology at the University Catholic Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii. I want to thank everybody who's been dropping by. We've uh, almost hit the 700 mark as far as subscribers to our videos is concerned. And uh, we're getting close to 5 million views on all the videos at YouTube and on the techstop.net. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys rock. About 30 episodes ago, we took a look at the SonicWall TZ190. It was an all-in-one Soho, so a small office, home office appliance that really did everything you needed on a network. It, it gave you your DHCP services, it gave you your NAT services, firewall, VPN, the works. Now the really cool thing about it was that it included a little slot on the back of the router which allowed you to plug in your uh, 3G card, be it HDSP or EVDO, from whatever vendor you might be uh, renting service from, it would allow you to take that card, plug it into the back of the router and use it as sort of a, a backup in case you're your main line went down, or even as your primary if you were doing some mobile work. Now, that product was fantastic. It was very cool, but the comment that we got the most often was that many of our viewers couldn't see themselves spending six to $800 on the router, and then another two to $300 on the access point, the, the power over Ethernet access points that would be run by the TZ190 to expand your network wirelessly. Well, we understand. I mean, that product really is for the high-end home networks or a Soho. What about the home user? What about the, the, the less expensive Soho networks that, that could be mobile, that, that could do some of that functionality perhaps without all the high-end advanced features? Well, for that, we're taking a look at the D-Link DIR450. The DIR450 is designed to work with EVDO 1X networks. Out of the box, it works with several standard cards and uh, vendors. If you go to the website, the D-Link website, and look up the DIR450, it will actually give you a list of all the cards that it's been tested and guaranteed to work with so that you can check to see if that's the card that you're currently using. The geek specs on the 450 are pretty good for a, a Soho reasonably priced all-in-one device. It supports 802.11b and G on the wireless. It has network address translation, stateful packet inspection, VPN pass-through, DHCP services, etc., etc. Everything that you might expect from a router of this class. The lights on the face of the 450 are bright and self-explanatory. There are LEDs for the power, network status, WAN activity, wireless activity, and lights for each Ethernet port. The back of the 450 has the PC card slot for your eVDO card of choice. Four 10100 Ethernet LAN ports for hardwiring your desktop, laptop, or network accessory to the router, a USB port for connecting external storage or a USB printer, and your standard reset and power ports. One thing that should be mentioned is that the 450 does not have a standard WAN port. It's designed to work exclusively through your EVDO card. So if you're hoping to use the EVDO card as a backup or occasionally hook this up to your router, your cable modem, or your DSL, you're out of luck. That's not what it's designed for. The 450 also has a removable antenna so that you can attach directional or omnis to fit your installation. Setting up the 450 is quite simple. Plug your EVDO card into the PC card slot at the back of the unit connect the wireless antenna, and power up the unit. You'll have to log into the router with your laptop or desktop in order to tell the router what kind of card you're using. You can either use an automated setup wizard, or if you're a bit more advanced, use the manual setup. I have a Sierra AirCard 595 with Sprint service, so I chose manual setup, selected my card, left everything else as was, and rebooted. After about 80 seconds, I was connected to the internet. 
The network settings should be familiar to you if you've ever set up a home router. You can change your IP address and range, configure DHCP, and view computers that are currently connected to the router. On the wireless side, you can enable or disable the wireless access point, change SSID, and select a channel. You can also enable D-Link's Super G mode and Extended Range mode, which can boost throughput and range with certain adapters. More useful is D-Link's Auto Channel Scan, which will allow the 450 to automatically select the most clear channel for your Wi-Fi. In terms of wireless security, the 450 supports WEP, WPA, and WPA2, though I want to take the opportunity to remind our audience that nobody should be running WEP unless you absolutely have to. And if you have to, assume that unwanted strangers are using your network. For the slightly more uber geeky power users, the 450 also allows you to set up virtual servers, port forwarding, application triggers, Mac filtering, website black and white listing, DMZ, firewall settings, zoo PNP, and multicast. Most users will never have to use these features, but it's nice to know that they're there. One feature that isn't included is the ability to specify a DNS or domain name server. Though this isn't a deal breaker, I found it odd that D-Link didn't include such a basic configuration option in their OS. The 450 also supports dynamic DNS, scheduled connections so that you can have the router turn on and off, and logging. The DIR450 is available online now for between $160 and $190, and D-Link makes models both for EVDO from Sprint and Verizon and UMTS or HSDPA from AT&T. In our lab, the 450 performed quite well. That is to say that it did exactly what D-Link said it would do. Allow us to take our EVDO card, plug it in, and within a few seconds have access to the internet either through the Ethernet ports or through the built-in wireless. Now, the cool thing about this product is that it seems as if it has been really designed so that those who have a lot of experience or those who have very little experience are equally able to get up and running and have it set up the way that they want to have it set up within just a few minutes. That's no small feat in this world of ever increasingly confusing technologies. As far as network performance is concerned, what we saw was that uh, it worked. It was solid. The wireless never went down when we... Once we had it configured, we never had problems with the Ethernet connectivity. And uh, it seems as if the only real difficulties we had is when we were moving the router into areas where we weren't getting really good sprint service, which is actually a lot of area in Hawaii because of the hilly terrain. So all in all, this is a very good product for those who want to use it for setting up a mobile Internet presence. That being said, there are a few negatives. First, and this is this is a big one for us. Especially when you're considering the fact that gigabit Ethernet is becoming the standard and that, you know, it's not really all that more expensive to implement than 10100. We don't understand why D-Link went ahead and put 10100 ports on the back here. Now, you could say that it would be because this card, the EVDO network, the 3G network, whatever you might be using, has no chance of providing even close to the 10 megabits per second of the lowest rated, rating on these ports. But I still would have liked to have seen gigabit so that I don't have to have an external switch to, to plug in computers if I want to do a lot of transfers between them. Now, that might just be me, but it, it seems sort of a no-brainer in this high bandwidth world. The second problem that we had with this was the fact that, uh, well, there are a few features like the, uh, the, the DNS settings, which you really couldn't specify. And, and we just don't understand why you wouldn't be able to do that. We here at uh, the office use several open DNS uh, services, which allow us to sort of offload from your Comcast or your Time Warner. Well, the fact that we have to set it manually on each computer rather than having this automatically assign it when it's doing the DHCP addressing is just sort of lame, really. But other than that, the 450 is a very, very solid product. It's actually something that we're probably going to be using quite a bit uh, just to make sure that we always have access whenever we're on the road. That's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about the DIR450 or any of the products that we've reviewed on Gadget, you can go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. If you click on the Gadget tab, you can actually find where you can download the high-resolution versions of all of our episodes. If you want to write us, you can reach us at gadget at thetechstop.net. I've been your host, Father Robert Ballas here. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology. And remember, there's no Uber Geek without you. <laughs>